Thank you very much for the introduction. I would like to thank the sages for the opportunity to present our work today. So I, I have nothing to disclose. So acid ingestion usually associated with suicidal intent and result in refractory esophageal strictures. So prolonged dilatation may be futile and may risk complication in some patient who ultimately fail dilatation. So outcome of the endoscopic dilatation and the factor associated with fail dilatation in corrosive esophageal stricture are less known. So our aim was to investigate the outcome of the endoscopic esophageal dilatation and to identify the factor associated with fail dilatation for early surgical consideration in patient with corrosive esophageal strictures. So patient with acid induced corrosive esophageal stricture were included in the study. Our patient underwent endoscopic dilatation with severely type dilator under fulloscopy. So the favorable outcome was defined when patients were able to swallow solid or semi-solid without the need of the surgical surgical or endoscopic intervention for at least six months. So failure of the dilatation was defined when inability to properly press the guideline for safe dilatation or complete luminal obstruction or perforation or refractory or recurrent stricture. Esophageal replacement procedure were offered to our patient with failed dilatation. So totally we have 55 patients with corrosive esophageal stricture. 95% were suicidal related and 96% had strong hydrochloric acid. The median length of the stricture was 12 centimeter. The most common location of the stricture orifice was chicopharyngeal area. So we have 300 23 dilatation session and the median number of session per patient was six. We have 2.5% esophageal gastric perforation and no dilatation related mortality. So at the median follow up duration of 55 months, 25% of our patients were considered cure and 75% were failed dilatation. So the etiology of the failed dilatation include perforation, complete luminal obstruction, unable to perform safe dilatation, and recurrent or refractory to the dilatation is the most common cause of the failure. So we identify four factors associated with failed dilatation. This includes the stricture length more than 10 centimeter, the frequent dilatation more than six times a year, and the refractory to the 11 millimeter dilatation and associated with hypopharyngeal stricture. So of 41 patients with failed dilatation, 38 patients underwent esophageal replacement procedure with colon interposition. So we have one operative mortality. So 85% of the patient who underwent esophageal replacement procedure had good swallow outcome compared to only 25% of patients with dilatation. So in conclusion, the majority of the patients with severe acid-induced corrosive esophageal stricture are refractory to the dilatation. And endoscopic esophageal dilatation is not effective in the majority of the patient. Only patient with a factor associate, only a patient without a factor associate with failed dilatation, including wrong stricture, frequent dilatation, refractory stricture, or associated with hypopharynx stricture should be eligible for dilatation treatment. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a great paper. Um, there are lots of people who uh, require frequent dilatation for, for, for strictures. Um, and, and of course, there's lots of people that have shown success with even uh, self-dilatation. Um, 
I mean, how do you have that conversation about uh, uh, what's your best option as far as uh, interposition graft versus uh, uh, frequent dilatation? Because it's 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 that's yeah, a, you know, there's, it's, there's, you know, it's there's really hard to define. Yes, this is just the data that I, that we we analyze and find that patient who have a, a, a frequent dilatation. So we just we just lovely calculate that six times a year uh, and more than six and and less than six, and it's got a significant difference in terms of statistical significance, so we just use that. So for practical, it's very hard to tell that how many times that, that will, or you can say that is it's, it's failed dilatation, so. So I enjoyed the presentation. It's uh, acid strictures are clearly a big problem. Yeah. Uh, did you find that there was a correlation between the number of dilations and the perforation risk? Yes. I.e., yes. did the perforation risk increase yeah, over time? Right. That's a good, uh, good, a good question. Because in our experience, the the perforation usually occur in the first or second. Uh, session of the dilatation, that means it's going to be a very, very, very refractory, very tight stricture. So, so that's why we use the 11 millimeter to be the cut point. If you try many times and cannot get over the 11 millimeter dilator, it's, it's, it's going to be a very risk for the perforation. So the patients that uh, were selecting themselves into long-term dilation probably will maintain long-term yes, dilation. Right. Uh, last question is, what's your uh, preferred uh, uh, esophageal replacement method? So colon interposition. So because uh, acid usually uh, destroys the stomach as well, so we cannot use stomach in our whole patient series. Thank you very much. Any Thank other questions from the audience? Thank you. Thank you very much.